Hey everyone, Rascal here. And Mama. Welcome to our podcast. Today we're finally covering Season 13 of Pokemon and the final season of the Diamond and Pearl Saga, along with this movie, Zorak, Master of Illusion. Now this season holds a lot of new beginnings for the trio. As Ash enters the Sinnoh League, Don attempts to win her final ribbon, and Brock realizing what his true calling is but before we start be sure to like subscribe and click the notification bell to get updates on future podcasts and mold of pause videos yes zorak is so cute okay yeah <laughs> we'll be getting to that soon yes so yes this is the last season of diamond and pearl before we get into the heavily controversial black and white season and the last season with dawn mm -hmm. and the last season of our ever faithful frog yes we kind of thought he was going to be gone when they had may and then he came right back after that tearful goodbye like oh hi ash it's like oh no you mean it this time <laughs> so yeah this time this is the last season to feature dawn and just like with the with actually with um may she's entering pokemon contest so this is also the end of having the sort of back and forth between Ash's gym battles and Dawn's uh, ribbon right. ribbon competitions. It's also the last we see of Team Rocket, the real Team Rocket, for a yeah, while, which we know. did not know. Right. <laughs> At first we thought they changed voice actors again, which I think they did do later, which you had to get used to again, but for here they're still being lovable and wholesome, yes. and we still loved cheering on Jesse and Dawn yes. for when it came to the ribbons. And I, <laughs> the one episode in particular where you actually, well two I should say, where you actually saw them get along and you really, really liked Dawn more and Jesse more mm -hmm. for how they interacted with each other. Right. But, right. And they actually had started having some pretty strange episodes later on when it got towards the end. Uh, we already established that they had a Pokemon ping pong contest <laughs> in one of our videos. It was like, okay. Then we had one with a Pokemon triathlon where your Pokemon run. I guess you run with them. And it's like a video where you have to pass the baton and you're both running together. And then in here we also have Dawn doing like a, uh, what is it, what is it called? The princess diaries type thing yes and they actually had a princess look just like her and of course they swap places I, yes and it's like okay this is a odd take for pokemon to go to they, they started having some weird episodes they were still fun they were just sort of ones you uh, didn't expect pokemon to have and then in this one since we're on that one with the the princess was nice to jesse and jesse's like what Right. You're twerp why are you being nice to me? <laughs> and she was so shocked and then she helped Jesse and Jesse was like, this doesn't change anything. Right. But it did. Yes. It did change everything. And that's what was really nice about this. Her feelings, well their feelings toward uh, the twerp and friends change. Her feelings toward Dawn change. Right. And then we had another episode where the reverse happened. Right. Where Jesse was like, you win, I'm cheering you. better you win, win, yeah. <laughs> and, as and she was like, huh? Right. And she was no longer the princess. Right. <laughs> it was great. It was a really nice change of events, a nice uh, twist that we didn't expect to see. Mm -hmm. And it worked. Mm -hmm. It worked very, very well. And, and we also have where the rivalry between Paul and Ash comes mm -hmm. to its height and then conclusion. Mm -hmm. And you actually do see some care development with Paul. Mm -hmm. Because for the past three or going four seasons for this particular series, he's been very rude pretty much the entire time. And as it went on, you start seeing why he's like this, why he's gotten so competitive. And he thinks that this is the way to go with Pokemon. Mm -hmm. And this is the only way to get stronger. Mm -hmm. And with his battle with Ash, he sort of has um, more realization that you know, there's more to the Pokemon than just trying to get stronger and just rigorous training. Mm -hmm. And he ends up getting a actually friendly rival in Paul. Mm -hmm. After they actually have like several episodes of them fighting because they had to use like, what, six Pokemon all together in, in when they had the championships. And he also got to see the continued development of Chimchar mm -hmm. as him grow as a Pokemon. He also evolved into... Uh, was it Infernape, I think? Yeah, Infernape. Infernape. So, he's no longer a cutie pie. But, uh -oh. he got <laughs> to see the development of him. And he got to see how Ash 
with his style of training and how he does it that it was effective mm -hmm. more effective than what he did and one more point I want to add to that is that we get to see or he tells us why he doesn't like ashes because he reminds him of his little brother <laughs> and his little brother has that same um, optimistic I'm gonna try never quit never stop attitude right and he just and doesn't they, like it yeah and when it came <laughs> from ashes it just made it worse right. so you like I said you did get development and backstory out of him and you know he, it, and you were kind of surprised when it was resolved because sometimes with some of these characters nothing changes they just like move on and that's it but here you actually saw a change where you didn't see Paul as this sort of just angry rival it's just more of an understanding between them, which they explain in there there's now the understanding between them of being actual rivals but not like the I'm gonna beat you and it's like this bitter rival is just where they want to get stronger. Right. You know, they're anime rivals, so. <laughs> you have the return of some trainers like Zoe. Yes. And. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, yeah, it was, yeah, I think Zoe was really the main one that showed kept, up and then. And she kept coming back and she kept imparting wisdom for uh, Dawn and she kept giving her advice and you could see they were becoming closer friends. Yeah, and she was actually giving her tips. Mm -hmm. And I went and, and and one thing actually stood out for the contest is when it was more than just showing them off. There was still that f battle part of it. So she explained that they actually end up seeing the result of what happens when you don't do it. Is that when you're with the Pokemon, the job is to show off the Pokemon. Right. If you come in and do more than the Pokemon, it shifts towards you and it lowers the score. Which Jesse unfortunately yes. did a few times before she finally got it straight to not do that. That the judges... And the audience aren't that interested when you do more than the Pokemon. Right, and that's when she won her first one when she let the Pokemon be the right, star. Right, she was having fun. And had that rapport. You're like, oh my god! Great. <laughs> and um, speaking of growing, I think we should go ahead and get to our main characters because mm -hmm. all three of them actually had some growth. Right. So we'll, actually, we'll start with Dawn first. Mm -hmm. And you got to see her grow from just being competitive and just wanting to beat Ash and wanting to have more ribbons than him and that attitude to growing to one of learning that competition is more than just beating other people it's also growing as a person right it's uh, learning as you mentioned how to treat your Pokemon right and your relationship bet between you and your Pokemon right and the relationships you can build between you and competitors not just as being you know, trying to beat each other, but actually developing friendships. Right. She had a little green-haired boy. I can't think of his name. Uh, yeah, I know who you're talking you about. Call him Dee Dee. Was it? Was it Kenny? I think so. I think it was Kenny. And so she, they had got a friendlier friendship. Mm -hmm. And then we also learned why they called her Dee Dee, which right. was like, really? Like that's it. That's it. And like you're afraid of that. And you're still afraid of it. It's like, ah, uh, you probably don't have to worry about that anymore. <laughs> So she got over that. We also saw her become closer and more understanding of her mom. Yes. And, and several better, times. And having a better relationship with her because she was getting farther. And you saw her mom become more supportive of her, actually showing up right. for some of the competition. Right. Because at first it was sort of distant. Right. Like she wouldn't show up. She didn't have too much encouragement to say whether she won or lost. So. It was glad to see they gotten closer through that because it looks like she was taking after mom and just kind of being focused right. on that and not in her hair for the fun. Right. <laughs> oh, bad hair day. <laughs> so you got to see a real growth in Dawn and at the end, of course, um, Piplock was really upset that Ash and Brock and their Pokemon were leaving. Oh, and Piplock she, got like beaten around this whole dang season. But he was so <laughs> upset they were leaving. He was so distraught. And Dawn put on a brave face, like, oh, okay, it's great. And then you saw her cry and get upset because she really did care that she wasn't going to be traveling with them again. So, again, you saw more sides of her and you saw a real big growth in her. So, we hope that at some point in the future she will make another appearance or guest appearance like Misty. Right. And then we should Brock. go to, yes, Brock. Brock, who just got better and better, and you got to see more and more skill. And you already love Brock, and you you fell in love with him more 
um, the way again he he uh, not only traveled with Don and Ash, but protected them, right, and taught them and cared for their Pokemon, and you got to see um, him focus more on being. He says a breeder, but he was more of a doctor, right? Which ended up coming up, right, and. You got to see him focus more on that than the ladies. I don't enjoy Pam. So yes, in here they actually address is like you know, bro, uh, you're more of a Pokemon doctor than a breeder, and it came to the fact that multiple times, numerous times actually in Diamond and Pearl. Brock had been more into healing Pokemon than breeding them or training them. I mean, he was good at training, but whenever Pokemon was sick and they weren't near a center, Brock was the go-to. Mm -hmm. He knew how to make the medicine, how to make the food, something that the Pokemon specifically eat, well, how to get their temperature down, what they specifically needed. And it became so apparent that it said, you, need, you should be a doctor instead because he really had a talent for healing all kinds of Pokemon. So he ended his journey saying he was going to go and go to school and train to become a Pokemon doctor. So we hope in the future that we will see him return. He'll be a Pokemon doctor. He'll marry the nurse Joy and he'll be happy, happy, happy. <laughs> <laughs> Which we know can happen. We've seen him marry nurse Joy. So. <laughs> so we're sorry to see him go, but we're happy to see that He's taken a journey where he's going to be more than he ever expected he could be and that he has the skills to do it. So Right. And, and then last, yeah, but not least, of course, Sylveon and Ash. Yes. Now, Ash definitely went through development here. And it was surprisingly a lot considering this was mm -hmm. the shortest season. It was only 34 episodes to close out this series. So they didn't rush anything, but you could tell he was taking everything he had learned and applied it. Mm -hmm. And this, and we had stated in one of our previous podcasts that this theme for this season was that, you know, how to build strength, how to add skills, or going with the opposite can still be a strength despite it, like being the opposite weakness or strength of a Pokemon. And it was also showing how he would never be aggressive with his Pokemon. He always sees all his Pokemon as family and friends, which they do stay uh, several times in here. Others think it's kind of stupid or weird. It's like, but that's your Pokemon. They're just a pet. They're just your battle partner. And that's it. But it showed here for, for Ash that they were more to him than just something you just catch or you fight with. Right. And also, you, you see his continued development as a person. As we mentioned him coming to an agreement with Paul on the friendly rivalry. Right. And Ash just has this personality that he's going to be friends with everyone. It doesn't matter how long it takes. It doesn't matter what he has to do. He just wants to be friends with everyone. I do love that about the series. He is the only character that I can recall in any series, whether it's regular animation or anime, who has that attitude and that eventually... It does end up happening, mm -hmm. directly or indirectly. Right. And I do love that. And as you mentioned, also loving the relationship between the many more Pokemon that he acquired during this season as well. Seeing the relationship that grew uh, stronger between he and Dawn, where he was not only more supportive and cheered her on more, but they both authentically and genuinely were happy for each other when they would win. Mm -hmm. And... They sincerely were cheering each other on, mm -hmm. which, you know, before it was that rivalry, <laughs> but <laughs> it changed in here, and it was fantastic. Right. And lastly, you also saw him learn a lot of things that Brock was teaching them mm -hmm. about the Pokemon. You, mm -hmm. can, you can tell in other episodes, like the one where he helped to find... Um, it was something to heal the Pokemon. Yeah, some berries. Yes. Because Brock was gone. Yes. So you can see that he, he's learning and growing and just becoming better and better. So as you mentioned, this is the most growth we've seen from him in any season, which was fantastic. And you just liked him more uh, by the end of this season. Right. And then, oh, before we get to the Zorak movie, you have to mention Team Rocket. Yes. They we got saved more it. episodes this season than ever oh, was, focused on them and oh, showed their fun whimsical side. It was so wonderful. And and there was actually one the episode. The before the storm. Right. And there was actually one episode they had 
where they're supposed to trick Piplum to join them and that they take away their Pokemon. They're pretending to be these, uh, these type of people that would know if their Pokemon were compatible with mm -hmm. their trainer and to help them through, you know, the difficulties. Almost like Pokemon therapists almost. And then, like, but you, and it was the thing when Piplup was telling them everything that had happened and then they end up crying and feeling bad for me. He said, Don't you worry, you can be our family now. I was like, Fools, you just saw everything that happened. That's why you came up with this thing and you still crying. Right? <laughs> it's so funny. It's like, the little hearts can take it. Yes. And it was it was really um, a season that showed the sharing of the season. Right. Ash, Don, Brock, and Team Rocket, and of course Lunchbox Man. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. They finally concluded the stuff um, from last season with the Galactic Battles thing. So now we're just focused on getting to the Sinnoh League. So for here. Uh, you kind of saw more of the contest. They showed more of that because Jessie was in a lot. Right. And they actually showed where she was actually having fun doing it. And then there was the episode where I kept calling everything that was going to happen before it happened. Yes. And including when um, James, I said, James is going to dress as Jesse. And he did. They're going to think he's Jesse. And they did. Yes. And he left out a little piece of hair right. so you would be sure you understood this wasn't Jesse because... Pretty James looked just like Jesse. Why? Oh my God! That was funny. Yeah, because she was sick and he had to pretend to be her, and he actually pulled it off. That was the and only thing. Yes, he he won fast. Like he would get one hit in and he would win every single round. It's like, why are you chasing Pokemon? You should be doing battles and stuff right. now. <laughs> then we got to see him do Professor Oka game, but not so well as he did the first time. Yeah, and it didn't stick as long because the Pokemon just was aggressive so much that he got like two seconds with it and it threw him out a window. Yes. It's like, man, you didn't, get, you didn't even get a chance. So, so, so this, there was some wonderful Team Rocket episodes. Oh, and, and they got promoted at the yes, end of the yes, season. Yes. They were crying and so happy. They The boss finally promoted them after they got rid of Team Galactic. Yes, good riddance. So now we only have the real Team Rocket. Yeah. Yes, and then we have the uh, Zorak movie, which is called Zorak Master of Illusions. Absolutely, and, and Zorak is Zorak again. So cute. Yes. So, for here, this one had more of a darker take. This started to feel slightly more like the first three movies with its tone. Mm -hmm. And in here, there was a, a Zorak and its mother were separated. This guy that could see into the future, supposedly, uh, he had visions that he was going to have this ultimate power, and Zark was the key to it. Not only could we, we be able to trick the future, we would have untold power through him. Mm -hmm. So he was keeping Zark and his mother in a cage, and he kept trying to get power out of them by having to battle his, his Pokemon that he has, and, he, and nothing was happening. Mm -hmm. So the Zark ended up escaping. And the mom, the mom left. yeah, the mom was left, and and she was trying to find it. He had lost both, and they were the key to getting him whatever he wanted. And they had gotten uh, separated. And so from there, the Zara ended up in this festival. They have like a festival every movie at mm -hmm. this point, and it has the power to change appearances. It could be another Pokemon, or it could be a human. Yes, with and a tail. Right. <laughs> and in this one, it was kind of like Lucara, where it could telepathically talk to people. And whenever it turned into a person, um, it would always act like a little animal with his hands up and then have a tail and it would run funny. And it became and it happened so many times in here he had to make sure that it was actually him because one time it pretended to be Brock for a long period and Brock had to come and say, Oh yeah, that's just my twin brother. He does silly <laughs> things that like your twin brother with a tail and then <laughs> it would pull its tail and it would turn back to its Right. And then when it was man on all fours, that was hilarious. Yeah, and she was so furious. Yeah, just quick I'm sorry, when she was Don, forgive yeah. me guys. Yeah. When uh it imitated Don and it was on all fours and Don was Furious. And she said, Stop imitating me! She <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. Whenever it turned to them, it would be almost like something from a Miyazaki film. And so so from there, the charm united back with its with its mom. You don't know if it's male or female, so we just call it it. Yeah. Um the guy the guy that tries to capture them is just ruthless. Mm -hmm. He's really ruthless. He's probably one of the more 
mean-spirited or crueler villains they've had in Pokemon. Nothing was going to stop them from getting them. And it got to a point when it got towards the end of the movie where he was constantly electrocuting some of them. He put the mom in a cage, and every time she hit the cage, she would get shocked. But when she kept hearing that her baby was in trouble, she was just trying to destroy the cage. It didn't even matter if it hurt. And then it got towards the end where he pre- he actually attempted to strangle a Pokemon. Yeah, this was one of the most violent ones. And yeah. I almost didn't finish the movie. Yes, I know they're not real. But still, the violence and what was happening was just like, you know, this puts you in such a bad mood. It was, And during those parts, this movie was not fun. Yeah. It was not fun at all. It was just Pokemon abuse. Yeah, and unfortunately, that was sort of the part that was not enjoyable towards the end. I mean, it did have a happy ending, of course. We were happy of the outcome that Guy was gone for good. But to, it's, up to that point, it was fun. It was actually very gripping to see what would happen next, because you were really hoping he didn't get them. And it had a happy ending. And you love seeing Zorak turning into the people even more than the Pokemon, because it was hilarious when he, when he tried to be human. Mm-hmm. But for that part, we kind of could have done without because it was going a little far. Because if the target's audience is still kids, I don't think it was a good idea to show them that. Because, like I said, the guy was cruel. It was more like animal abuse. Yes. But that would be like the only complaint I really had with the movie. Other than that, it was pretty fun, very interesting. Action, love the power of him turning into people. And a little bit sweet because you got to see them tell him goodbye and. Um, it turned into Ash. Right? Yeah, and you were thinking like, where, where is Ash going? And he said, no, but can you please stop turning into me? And then, <laughs> uh, oh, there he is, let's see the tail. <laughs> and we fell for it right. too. <laughs> so, for the, as you mentioned, except for the parts with the Pokemon abuse, we did enjoy the movie and he's an awfully cute pokemon yeah and hopefully we'll get to see him again maybe in another movie right so now we go into the controversial season black and white season 14 we say goodbye to the team rocket we know and love yes and we say goodbye to don and brock and all of ash's pokemon that he's required in diamond and pearl and we head off into a new adventure so we will see you there. All right. Oh, and be sure to like, subscribe, and click the notification, bu- notification button to get updates on future podcasts and more to pause videos. Absolutely. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Rascal Entertainment. And I'm Mom Entertainment. Have a fantastic day. Peace. And the water sitting, flashing lights. Trying to walk around, man, who the hell are you? What you want to do? My man, it's on you. Man, it's on you. Put her in my dreams. She was my queen. A castle in the mountaintops, rivers and streams. Sunlight from the sky.